Mad Science Films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker, sexual astronaut, and this week, as ever, I am joined by my sumptuous co-host. Oh, sumptuous, I like. Maybe that could be my new nickname, Sumptuous Jim. Uh, I'm James Morrissey, <laughs> filmmaker based in South Wales. Yes. Okie dokie. And, and our mission, sumptuous. our mission for this week and mm. for the foreseeable future is to redis- rediscover forgotten films, shine a little spotlight on them, sing their praises, and then campaign them to get a sumptuous Blu-ray release. That's clearly my word for the week, sumptuous. This week, following Jim's TV movie marathon last week, this week it's back to me. Not quite sure how it sticks up. We'll, we'll, we'll check with uh, James there what he thinks, but this week is my choice again. Um, and this film was actually the film that originally gave me the idea for the whole format of this kind of show, because I was just like, really? what is this? Why don't yeah. why doesn't everybody know about this? This should be you know talked about. This needs a decent Blu-ray release. So this week we're talking about 1988's The Jitters, directed by John Fazano in Chinatown. A yeah, court shop yeah, owner is murdered by a street gang that goes on nightly rampages. Merchant Frank Lee has no way of fighting back until he's murdered and then brought back as a Chinese vampire or Jiang Xi. Uh, and then basically there's a bunch of fighting and yeah, <laughs> madness and <ensues. laughs> oh. Is that fair to say, Jim? Is that what yeah, you're yeah, that Nailed it. You nailed it. That was exactly what I watched. Thank you so much for, uh, for um, <laughs> bringing it my way. Um, now was, I, your, can, I, can I ask you a quick question? Was this yeah. your first Chinese vampire movie? Um, I think so, yes. Yes, you're welcome. I think it's, so, it's, yes. You, do you know what? Um, it can only get better. I was not a massive fan of the jitters. Um, I, I don't know whether I have... It, let's say I watched this back in the days of when I was watching films like, I don't know, um, Return of the Living Dead and all those 80s classics. I may have had a bit more of a soft spot for it, but I think watching it... Um, for the first time the other day i just if if it was like with um fatal deviation mm. that was endearing because it was trying to be a good film right and it did flop but it was endearing knowing that this was trying to be a funny film trying mm. to be a comedy um kind of made me a bit peed off with it because it's like well you're saying you're going to make this funny and it's not funny. Now, acting played a big part. Now, the only, the only, like, I re- I tell you what I did enjoy in it was James Hong. I thought he brought a lot of, I mean, he's a good actor anyway, isn't he? I think this was just before brings, Trouble in Little China. He brings, he brings a lot brings of credibility. He brings to it, doesn't he? He brings, yeah, he brings a lot of credibility to it. Yeah. And he understands comedy and the timing and how to, um, you know, deliver the sarcasm and how to make fun. He probably read the script and thought, this is mental. I'm going to be mental in it. And he really knew how to do that role. Um, but the others, I think it's it's very damning for an actor. There's, nothing exploits you more, I think, than a poor actor trying to act comedy. And it's just like, whoa, you don't get the timings. You don't I'll give get you the... that. I'll, I'll agree, mate. I think as a comedy, it doesn't quite work. I think as a weird yeah. oddity with horror which introduces elements not currently seen in the West. That's the bit I love. Comedy, I'll absolutely give you. As a comedy, it doesn't really work. And I think you've hit the nail on the head. Now, comparing it to films like Big Trouble in Little China and, say, Golden Child, both of those came out in 86. I think this came out in 88. So I think this was an attempt to ride that trend. Now, obviously, Big Trouble in Little China flopped, which was mental that we live in a universe where that film isn't successful. Golden Child, however, because of Eddie Murphy, was successful. So I think they looked at that. I think they'd already got things in motion. You know, it's a low budget film. So sometimes that can mean that although it can be, say, quicker to shoot it, it might take a little while longer to get released. So Mm. I think they were hoping that this was going to be the start of this amazing trend of all of these like Chinese folklore stuff in Hollywood films. And of course, Mm. yeah, although Golden Child was a success, it was people saw it was a success because of Eddie Murphy, not because of any sort of plot related issues. Yeah, so the comedy bit, I'll agree, mate. I, I don't think it works. So I think if you look at things like um, Big Trouble in Little China, everybody's playing it straight. Nobody's trying to go for the gag, which I think is the yeah. problem, especially with like you know the main characters. Not James Hong. I think James Hong plays it spot on, as you said. Great, yeah, I think the, the, the other actors. 
I I just think they they I'm in a comedy. I'm going to play it up or whatever. And yeah, it doesn't quite land. <laughs> um, there was some fantastic VFX in it, though. There's some really good kind of practical effects. I thought it was fantastic. The bit where um, the transformation of one of the vampires. Yeah, the gang this, member that turns into the vamp yeah, that turns like into that lizard demon thing. thing. Wow. Yeah, it was fantastic. I was not I really, expecting that. Yeah. No, and that was, it was because um, I kind of watched it thinking oh okay where's this going this is just going to be this poor man hopping around uh the entire hour and a half um you know but then I, it was a nice pleasant surprise to see some cool quite gory um visual yeah. effects and that was that was quite cool so yeah. um I, I did enjoy some scenes um but yeah, I, I just wonder, I mean, when was the first time you watched this film then? This was quite uh, recent, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was during lockdown. Um, yeah. Probably June. I think it was like within the first couple of weeks of my, uh, my newborn son being born. And it was just like, yeah, I'm not going to sleep. So what's on YouTube? So yeah, yeah, as I said, it was one of the yeah. films that I kind of found. I was just like, why isn't this better known? Because... I mean, you were hinting at it. So in, in like Hong Kong cinema, there was this uh, genre in the 80s called Jiang Shi. Um, and Sammo Hung kind of introduced it with uh, Incarnate was the spooky kind. And then there was a more popular series of movies called Mr. Vampire, Mr. Vampire 2 Vampire, and all that. Yeah. I was aware of Mr. Vampire through Channel 4 late night TV back when I was in my early teens. They showed Mr. Vampire 2. And I was just like, what is this? There's a little kid vampire and they're slapping this bit of paper on him as a talisman, which then freezes him. And I loved it, mate, because, you know, it's no more ridiculous and hopping vampires. It's no more ridiculous. You think about it than, you know, Western vampires and garlic, garlic messes up a vampire. What's that about? Oh, it can turn into a bat. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I just love the fact it was yeah. like, it was recognizable in terms of it was a bloodsucker. You know, it had sharp teeth. It's a vampire, but they're different rules. And it was like, okay, all bets are off. Now, I haven't actually seen it, but there is a Hong Kong movie out there called Vampire vs. Vampire, which is like one of these Jiang Shis versus Dracula. And I want to see that. I want to see what happens when East meets West in yeah, yeah. vampire action. So I'm hoping somewhere I can just kind of track that down. This, this Jiang Chi then, is this actual uh, folklore? This is yeah, legit yeah. hopping vampires? I, I believe so. Filmmakers made this up. This is... That there's yeah, so Jiangxi yeah. is Chinese folklore. It's a crazy uh, one. It's uh Yeah. But it makes sense, you know, vampires, rigor mortis, you know, they're dead, so all they can do is hop. <laughs> they're not gonna be running around and flexing. I ah, see Jim. Yeah. Be... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I dig I'm... it, I dig it. I mean <laughs> Um and there was yeah, more recently, uh, about maybe 10 years ago maybe less uh, there was a movie called rigor mortis again i think it was hong kong and it was like a modern attempt to kind of reboot that genre or whatever mm. definitely worth checking yeah. out it was a long time ago it might not still be there but it used to be on netflix so rigor mortis oh, okay. is kind of like it, it's more serious there's a bit of comedy elements to it and that was always part of the genre as well was their comedy elements meets kung fu meets you know the horror mm. kind of mm. you know dressings or whatever so yeah. That's kind of what I dug about the jitters was it was an American attempt to take these things and deliver it in a package that would be West, yeah. attractive, attractive to the West. They attempted to do it as a comedy. The comedy fell flat. And I think that's definitely a fair criticism. I think if they either try to do it more serious or they try to do it in a tone of Big Trouble in Little China or Golden Child, it would have worked. It doesn't yeah. help that they didn't have a, you know, a Kurt Russell or they didn't have uh, an Eddie Murphy to carry it. The main guy, I forget his name. I mean, you know, his, his most notable trait, I could say, is he has a mullet. Yeah. Is it Sal Viviano? Or something? That sounds right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, as far as I can tell, he was brought aboard because he'd worked with the director, John Fazzano, on a previous movie. Um, I think mm. a zombie nightmare or a rock and roll nightmare. One of the, no, I'm getting it wrong. Black Roses. Right. So, yeah, yeah, they worked together on that. The director himself, John Fazzano, I think he passed away a few years ago, but he had this great little run up until Jitters of like these weird indie horror movies. So he was doing like metal horror um, with Black Roses and Rock and Roll Nightmare, which, you know, starring like all these hair metal rockers and everything and, you know, meets zombies and all that kind of stuff. 
he was co-director or uncredited director on Zombie Nightmare, which again, I think you can check out on DC, Prime. Yeah. That's over yeah. on Prime. Um, yeah. And yeah, you know, he again, hats off to him. As far as I can tell, the script writers haven't got a huge amount of script writing experience. So how the project came to be, I don't know, but I think that would be an amazing story if a boutique Blu-ray label could kind of, you know, pick it up and find out, you know, what what inspired these guys to you know actually draw from you know chinese you know mm. cinema and you know try bring it to the west um not entirely successful but amazing this thing exists um as you say yeah james james hong who was in big trouble in little china who was also in golden child they you know clearly decided to get their money out of him i mean you know he was great entertainment on screen all times very sarcastic very sardonic you know which again is it kind of matches that amazing performance in um big trouble in little china <laughs> as well as lopan you know yeah i mean the, the first time i laughed at the film was when he was on scene um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was it the was it the the terrible dad joke of um, Chinese yeah. vampires? <laughs> One hour after he beats you, after after he bites you, he wants to bite you again. I was just like, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Uh, no, but he, he he was good in it. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, for me, it was just some of the acting was pretty poor. Like the um, the 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 tough guy gang just well, just like um your typical 80s frat boys just dressed in like batman t-shirts um <laughs> just dodgy costume just trying to act tough and it was like oh, yeah you're not really convincing me yet. considering um, yeah they're supposed yeah. to be a street gang i mean it was pretty much as far away as you can get from the warriors as possible isn't it as yeah, you said, yeah, yeah. Frat, frat boys just playing up seemed to be about right when yeah. later on there's a development where you know oh no they're actually part of an organized crime I'm like, criminal oh, like, yeah 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 nah, 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 nah. there's a lot of uh there's a lot of moments you would ask to just go with the flow yeah. um and i think they asked a bit too much at times but there was some some cool scenes some cool vfx in not fast on the music though i gotta be honest the uh the score was a bit all over the place True, but it, had over its own, it had its own theme tune at the end mind so you know yeah just some parts <laughs> like what the fuck am i listening to here but uh <laughs> But yeah, it was it was it was definitely one to watch. It was definitely interesting. Particularly if you watch films like Mr. Vampire, yeah. I think you might get a kick out of this one. Um, I would say this is a great gateway drug. So, yeah, you know, if you're intrigued by ignore the comedy element, which yeah, I agree doesn't work. Yeah. If you're intrigued by the folklore, the rules, the the act, the ability to for people to actually be able to do martial arts, yeah, in a horror film, which this one yeah. also doesn't quite succeed at mm. definitely mm. worth checking out uh mr vampire and all of those kind of things yeah, yeah I, I definitely will um check those out because i want to see if i want to see how this is done when it's done better um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah fair enough, fair enough. Watch those. but uh yeah yeah all right jim okay so i'll jump in now with boutique blu-ray labels and then we'll hand it over to you so i'm thinking 88 films would be good guys to pick this up they've done a lot of like um Hong Kong horror films in the past, Asian, boxes, yeah, mm. boxes omen, all those kind of things. Eureka films have recently put out loads of Jackie Chan stuff and the Mr. Vampire films as well, at least the first one. Um, so yeah, and some Sammo Hung stuff as well. With mm. with they might both be picking up. I'd be intrigued to see what Arrow could do with it, just in terms of the quality of their their special features as well. As I say, it's such a weird outlier of a film. Like John Fasano, after this, pretty much just does yeah. like TV movies and episodes of TV. So you know, why did he want to do this? I mean, I'm only guessing because of the timeline. Mm. You know, the Big Trouble in Little China, Golden Child. You know, uh, Link. It, it just seems like you know a couple of years afterwards there was a low budget cash in. That sounds like yeah. the kind of thing Roger Corman would try to do. So, yeah, Arrow Films as well, I think, could put out an amazing disc and, yeah, it'd be jam-packed with some really good special features. It's, it's just a shame that the director's passed away because I think, you know, he would be like a treasure trove of good factoids. But, Jimmy, what do you think? Who, who, who would be best placed to put that? Uh, out? I was just say 8 Films for those reasons, actually. They got a mm -hmm. lot of uh, age of persuasion, like to delve into that kind of uh, market. Um, Anchor Bay, actually, they've got a good selection of horrors, anything from okay. Chud to Halloween, so they might want to take a punt at it. Particularly as this is trying to uh, introduce the West to the East in terms of horror, they might want to have a look at it. 
um yeah that's pretty much it so uh okay let's see if anybody um wants to do that like you know so yeah yeah yeah. so if you guys dug this film um obviously check out big traveling little china definitely check out golden yeah. child which i need to rewatch. i haven't rewatched um golden child for a while so uh i remember digging it so. i got the knife you got the knife i got the <laughs> knife love a brilliant film it's been a while so yeah i gotta check that out again yeah. um and as i said yeah so um Check out some more Zhang Shi films. Mr. Vampire, Mr. Vampire 2. Yeah. Uh, Encounters of the Spooky mm-hmm. Kind, definitely. And I'm going to try check out and find Vampire vs. Vampire as well to see Zhang Shi Vampires vs. Dracula. I want to see what happens. I want to see who wins. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it, similar to you, I, you know, Mr. Vampire, definitely check that out. Um, I will be checking that out. Um, I did have Big Trouble Little China down. I think that's just an obvious one. Um, it's also some kind of funny vamp films uh like vamp uh mm. that's a good one to good watch call. 80s Definitely. comedy vampire similar film. period as well isn't um, it? and if you did yeah yeah this kind of um if you did find this funny uh you may want to check out shriek if you know what i did last friday the 13th because that was not funny <laughs> that was also a poor attempt at comedy think, if you by chance did find this funny definitely check out that one if you so see if that you got, one. if you got poor taste you'll probably dig that yeah you probably enjoy sense. that as well yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh ooh, ooh, another one as you were mentioning it um vampire comedy fright night similar fright night, yeah. i think and a hero with a mullet or was that Friday night too did he have the mullet that's in the two. water that's well? two. Yeah, two two yeah. although i love two as well mate you know i yeah, i, I like good, number yeah. two right up there with Tom number Lee one Wallace, I think, directly, yeah right? number two definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently um there's gonna be a sequel apparently yeah i saw that but again they're, they're doing the thing where they're gonna ignore number two the, where number i, two, I, I yeah. take number two i actually really like two i think that's I like number two, that yeah. works because it's yeah. they make him the vampire and i'm like yeah that's Brilliant. you know in yeah. the last in the last one you know he's paranoid he's fighting the vampires and this one he ignores all of that because it's a hot girl so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but cool 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 yeah definitely so guys uh, let us know if you've seen the jitters or um yeah if you can track it down let us know what you think let us know what films that you'd recommend that we should check out either related to the jitters or just messed up mad films that are out there on the interwebs um and we will do our best to campaign it and get somebody to pick it up jimmy take us away so if you liked this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And like Jim said, any comments, leave them down below in the comment section. Yes, and hit that notification bell too to stay in tune for more coming from us. There's going to be loads of these every week. Uh, um, yeah, until next time, goodbye. See you later. Mm.